Hey, I'm Brian with Next Level Gardening. If you're looking to join an online garden community that offers tips, tricks, and support to help you take your gardening to the next level, you're in the right place. Get started now by clicking subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss anything. Now let's get growing. So in my last video where I talked about the different types of seeds I was gonna grow and the different types of seeds that there were, um, I got a lot of questions and comments about the different categories of seeds, which are safe to grow, which are not safe to grow. Talking mainly about GMO, hybrids, heirlooms, and open pollinated varieties. So what are the differences between those and are some safer than others? So I already talked about GMO a lot in that video. Um, you're not as a home gardener going to accidentally get GMO seeds. They are very tightly controlled by, you know, big ag. It's kind of like going into the drugstore for a pain reliever medicine over the counter and accidentally walking out with oxycodone. It's not going to happen. However, I still get comments that show that there is a lot of misinformation and misunderstanding about this entire subject. Comments like this one. Uh, GMO is a buzz term. For thousands of years, farmers would select crops, breed, crossbreed them, and etc. until they got the best crop. Most everything we have is some form of GMO. I would argue non-GMO seeds are still GMOs. GMO seeds are not created in nature. They are not a natural process. They are not created because a farmer breeds two plants and you know controls that. That is not what GMO is. GMO is directly microscopically inserting DNA that is a completely different makeup than that plant's DNA, inserting that directly into the genetic material of a plant. And it may not even be a, a, a related DNA. It could be something like a bacteria. Now, I'm not going to get into the good, the bad, the moral or health implications that could be involved with changing a plant in this way. That could be a whole nother video. <laughs> Let me know if you want to see that video because I'd be happy to do it. So forget about GMO seeds. You're not going to accidentally have GMO seeds in your garden. So that leaves us with three others to talk about. Hybrid, heirloom, and open pollinated. So let's talk about hybrids first. Hybrids, I believe, is what that viewer had in mind when they made that comment. Hybrids are the result of uh, crossbreeding, natural crossbreeding. Now, hybrids could be done by bees, butterflies, wind. They can also be made by farmers or hybridizers or by adventurous home gardeners. You yourself are a hybrid of your two parents. It's a completely natural process that is sometimes controlled by human beings to create new um, varieties of fruits and vegetables that have desired traits. But there's nothing unnatural or harmful about it. When you cross two tomatoes in, an, in a controlled environment, you get the offspring, which is an F1 hybrid, meaning uh, first generation. My favorite cherry tomato, Sun Gold, is an F1 hybrid. That means that if you save seeds from your Sun Gold tomato plant and then plant them next year, they're not going to produce a Sun Gold tomato. Now that new plant would have characteristics similar to one or both of the parents, but it's not going to be the Sun Gold tomato. Now those plants that you grow from that tomato seed from the Sun Gold tomato will probably be weak because they have weak genetics because they have now been inbred. And so your plant will definitely reflect that. Hybridization is the reason that grocery store tomatoes taste flat. They are not bred for taste. They're bred for quick growth, for shape, for color, for the ability to uh, stay firm while traveling long distances. They're not bred for flavor. And I think that's pretty obvious. Open pollinated seeds are pollinated by nature, wind, bees, butterflies, bugs, but they will come true to type. 
Meaning if I plant a Kellogg's breakfast tomato seed and I prevent it from being cross pollinated with a little net bag or something to keep the bugs and bees and everything away from it. And I'll make another video later in the, in the summer about how to save seeds. But that seed that I save will be true. And next year when I plant it, it's going to be a Kellogg's breakfast tomato plant. Now, heirloom tomatoes must be open pollinated, but not all heirloom tomato, but not all open pollinated plants are heirlooms. To be considered an heirloom, the variety has to have been around for 50 to 100 years. Now that exact number is up for debate, but they're basically varieties that have been passed down generation to generation. Um, a popular number thrown out there, a popular year is 1951, because it's after 1951 that a lot of hybrids starting started to become common. So anything before 51 is considered an heirloom. Heirloom seeds, like family heirlooms, have a history and a story to them. That makes them really fun to collect and grow and gives you tons of intriguing party conversation for your next get together. Except I, as I awkwardly found out only if that get together involves fellow garden enthusiasts. The bottom line is you can't grow GMOs. It's impossible, but you can grow the other three without question and without fear. With that said, I'm going to be kicking off a seed starting series starting February 2nd and running every single Tuesday in the month of February. Now, before I had this channel, I rarely, if ever, started my seeds indoors. I just didn't need to. My last frost date um, was Jan February 14th, Valentine's Day. And so after that point, I could safely put just about every seed directly into the garden and have no problems. Once I started this channel, however, I found out that there's a lot of you who just can't do that. And so I needed to adjust my way of doing things to be able to cover everyone. So I started to grow my seeds indoors. And three or four years later now, um, I'm just starting to perfect the process. So on these uh, four Tuesdays of February, I'm going to be uh, using methods that I've used successfully in the past and continue to use. I'm also going to be trying a couple of new ones to see how they work. Let me know in the comments how you start your seeds and maybe some way that you were thinking of trying that I could maybe put to the test for you and for everyone else. I'll see you guys next time.